evening, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in for tonight's special Veterans Day book chat with guest author Barbara Gruner and her children's book, Mr. Quigley's Keys. My name is Melody McAllister, and this is my last book chat for the year of 2021, so thank you for tuning in before the holidays. And before we start chatting, I'd like to thank those who have served and are serving in our U.S. military and for the family supporting our veterans. Your sacrifices do not go unnoticed, and the way you serve is above and beyond what most of us can even comprehend. I'd like to send a special shout out to some of my special friends, Mel Crafton, Mel Arasso, the Marquezes, the Bauerfeins, the Ricks, my Uncle Harry, the Bostics, Dean Ganey, Kevin Rickard, among so many who are a part of my life. And if you'd like to give a shout out to a veteran, leave a comment during our live and I'll make sure to broadcast it. I'd also like to give a shout out to those watching in our Teacher Goals Connected School Communities Group and EduMatch Publishing Community. Mr. Quigley's Keys is an incredible heartfelt story about a Navy veteran based on the real life of Navy veteran Don Pittman. When Barbara reads her special story, you're going to see the incredible man he was and how he lived his entire life in service of others in meaningful ways that are found in the special keys upon the foundation of the story. We welcome children of all ages to listen in and reflect with us. This incredible story was written by Barbara Gruner, an educator, a speaker who truly exemplifies the keys in her story. Today, after reading Mr. Quigley's Keys with my own children, we made our own keys of traits that are the keys in our lives. Her book ends with activities and questions for parents and teachers to discuss with students, along with an American Sign Language alphabet. It truly is a story perfect for Veterans Day, World Kindness Day, which is this Saturday, and pretty much every day of the year. We hope you'll be inspired when our time is finished. Barbara, congratulations on the launch of Mr. Quigley's Keys for earning the Mom's Choice Award, and thank you so much for joining us tonight. How are you, and can you tell us a little bit about your background? Oh, I'm doing well. Thank you, Melody, so much for having me. I just love Veterans Day. One of my favorite days when I was in the elementary schools was bringing those veterans in and honoring them, teaching the kids in our first grade classes, the different branches of the military, and then following it up by sending sweets to our soldiers and Valentines um, so that they are never forgotten, right? hugs from home is what they would call it. And some of our veterans would tell us this was the very first time anybody has even recognized them for their service. So it's something that's still going on, even though I'm not at the school anymore. That's incredible. And you've kind of had a busy last 24 hours. Like you've this whole week, you've been doing some special things and then you flew in, it was a stormy. You had a, a pretty cool a veteran story that just happened. Right. So last night I was coming home after speaking at the Wisconsin State Counseling Association, um, a do and a kindness pre-con for three hours. I boarded the plane in Madison and I made my way down to Dallas, but we came through some pretty turbulent weather and we went kind of through a storm and around a storm, which shortened my window to make my connection. We taxied for about 20 minutes. So I kind of got to the um, gate where I was supposed to continue on down to Houston just as my doors had closed and the plane was shoving back. So they said, no worries, we'll put you on the 1045, which became 1145 and then 1245 and then 145. So I rang in Veterans Day this year, um, waiting to see if we were actually going to make it back to Houston or not. Sadly, at about 1.30, they canceled that flight, but I was able to sit next to a soldier in at gate B25. So I thanked him for his service, which my friend Margaret Limmer taught me to do when I taught across the hall from her. And I kind of got his story. They weren't even going to get him where he was going until Friday. So he said his brother would pick him up because he was out processing. He had served his time and he was headed home to Colleen and Fort Hood, I believe is the is the base there. Wow. And you told me that you felt very safe, like you had to spend the night in an airport, but it was it, it wasn't too scary. Well, it's kind of funny because you think, OK, I've got all my possessions with me, right? I've got my purse. that has got my identification. If you fell asleep, it feels like, you know, you're not really protected or safe. Sitting next to that soldier, we just kind of had a little four group of four of us that were all kind of commiserating. One girl wasn't going to be able to get to Colorado till Friday. I mean, we were all sharing our stories. And then and it felt like from between three and four, four fifteen, I think I got a little cat nap, but it did feel safe. And I'm always so to our military servicemen and women because 
at the end of the day, freedom isn't free and they're giving right. it all that sacrificial kind of kindness and love. I agree totally. And um, I, I know I've also felt like it, it's sometimes scary to approach people you don't know, but it really is important. I feel like also to thank people who are in service because it really is a kind of sacrifice that most of us don't understand and for their families as well. Um, so thank you for sharing that special story. And Dr. Sarah Thomas, our uh, EduMatch CEO and founder, thank you for popping in. Um, tell us a little bit, Barbara, about your award-winning book, Mr. Quigley's Keys. And don't stop at just the Mom's Choice Award in the background. Tell us about some really cool things that's coming up as well. Okay, so I'm pretty excited about the book. It came out June 1st on my 60th birthday. But I got the idea about 10 years ago when my friend Jennifer, who's Jennifer Quigley, was telling me about her dad. My dad had visited school. He wrapped her up in a big, a big bear hug. And she said, oh, I miss those daddy hugs. So I said, tell me more. And she said, well, he passed away. Um, at the age of 53 and he mm. um, had been the janitor at my school. So she said her first school, she was teaching fourth grade and he was Odian, kind of the maintenance man for the district. So the kids would hear him coming down the hall and they knew that he was Miss Pittman's dad and they were so excited because he was so kind to them, right? Then she says, the weird thing is he never even heard his own keys because a, a war injury left him deaf at the age of 19. She added that he never even heard her voice because he had lost his hearing in the Korean War. And so I just said, man, Jennifer, you need to write that story, Mr. Quigley's Keys, I can hear it now. And she said, well, his name was Mr. Pittman. I said, I know, but Mr. Quigley's Keys has a nice ring. She said, right. I'm not an author, she said, but I know someone who is. And I remember thinking, is she actually giving me permission to write her daddy's story, right? But then I don't write fiction. I'm more of a like a real story writer. So I cooked on it. And while I did, I watched custodians. I made school visits through the National Schools of Character. And I just started watching the custodians. What is so special about how they connect and serve? And I yes. saw yeah, I saw Mr. Sam down in Missouri who actually came to the cafeteria with a homemade birthday card every year and he tucked a dollar inside and the kids couldn't wait to hear him coming. So I put a little bit of Mr. Sam in the book. And then I saw Mr. Fred who just watched me transist from one school to the next and he would bring me things. Hey, I have I found you a new chair. And I'm like, do I need a new chair? And he's like, look at the chair. He's in. <laughs> like they notice stuff, right? See a need fill a need. And that's what they do. And then I watched um, the one I'm with now. I'm in a school and his name is Gabe and he's a little bit younger. And I said, Gabe, I kind of need a, I kind of need a shelf for this Elmo stand. And he says, oh, okay, I'll look. And then I thought to myself, I wonder if it's going to be there tomorrow. And sure enough, in the morning, he didn't even bring me a shelf. He brought me a whole new Elmo stand. It's those kinds of service it, that mindful everyday living that just helps what we've got going on go more easily and smoother. Totally agreed. Um, it, the importance of every person who works in a school community um, is, is what makes learning successful for our students. Every single person matters. And I love that you found, and I am going to show the, the picture of the story who, this is Mr. Pittman, who you wrote Mr. Quigley about, but I love that you also incorporated qualities of other, you know, um, people and in, in the custodial um, personnel. I just love that so much. Um, so that's great. So if you are watching and we hope you are, uh, we're going to have story time. Like Barbara is reading. She's so kind. She's going to read her story. And I put the comments. I, I usually do that while reading, but I'm going to hold up the picture so that you don't have to worry about it. And if um, hopefully I'll get any comments, but stick around and listen to the story and I will be flipping through the pages. So awesome. whenever you are ready. I am. I want to also tell you that we did win a Mom's Choice Award, which basically is a gold award for excellence and family friendliness. And so we're excited that the Mom's Choice Organization would read through our book and, and choose us as a 2021 
honoree. Yes, that is so amazing. And also, and, and I forgot, you have some other things coming up. Um, so without ruining the plot of this, what um, somebody else reached out to you. Do you mind sharing that? No, not at all. The Cerebral Palsy Association, my friend Sarah was writing a curriculum for them this summer um, for just different abilities. I believe the campaign is going to be called Just Say Hi. And they want to recommend books. And then she's written curriculum for them to, um, to reach and educate about all sorts of differing abilities. And I was able to record the story, but they asked me to do it um, so visually impaired people, people with visual impairments could also see the story, right? And so I was able to, every single book, I would say, a page, I would say, okay, and on this page, the illustrator has um, painted 12 keys and you see um, Harmony is in the corner, a young girl and her hair is black. And then Mr. Quigley is up on a ladder and he's got a painter suit on. So they just wanted one or two sentences prior to every page that I read so that people, again, with visual impairments can also enjoy the story. I love that. And if you're watching, this is excellent. This is so powerful when you think about representation for young people or people of any age who are hearing impaired. Um, this is just amazing. And the American Sign Language alphabet that you include at the end, it really got my daughter sparked um, to learning that at the beginning of the school year when we first read it together. So, okay, I don't want to, um, I don't want to keep the suspense. Let's start our story time and I will do my best to show these amazing illustrations. All right. Thank you so much. We do start the book telling the kids a little bit about um, Mr. Quigley, that we're going to be hiding some keys. We give a sneak peek at that mural. We hide 12 camouflage keys. And so we've dedicated the book to Mrs. Quigley. And I'll show, yes, those keys. Those are the keys. And so there are 11 of them. There's actually a 12th and it's behind his knee. So one question we can ask ahead of time is, ooh, what's the trait on the key behind his knee? Because it's hidden. And so that kind of can focus, be like a guiding question for the, the read aloud. I love it. I love All it. All right. He's almost here. I called out cheerfully as soon as I heard the clanging cadence of Mr. Quigley's keys. The sound of those keys was music to our ears because it told us that our fixed friend was on his way. It totally felt like kindness coming closer as each one of these shiny metal treasures bounced and jounced on his belt. Everybody loved Mr. Quigley. He was our maintenance man. His kind, playful smile and warm, caring eyes could light up a room brighter than any light bulb in his supply closet. He was also a painter, a carpenter, and a can-doer. There was nothing that Mr. Quigley couldn't do. He adjusted leaky faucets and tightened up wobbly shelves. He oiled up squeaky doors and freshened up weathered walls. He would take care of things before anybody else even knew they needed fixing. He even knew how to help put friends together when hard things tried to break us apart. And I love that illustration that Audrey- Me too. I will ask the kids, what do you think they're fighting about? And a kindergartner the other day said, well, the kid in the yellow shirt's taking up too much room on the bench. <laughs> I love kindergartners. <laughs> as, I I love <laughs> as I watched Mr. Quigley paint our keys to connection on the wall, I realized that each one of these 12 traits fit him perfectly. His every move seemed to speak the language of gentleness, goodness, and love. He never needed to say much because how he treated us did the talking for him. And I, I wanted to be just like him when I grew up. I especially loved how he quietly jingled his way through the halls, 
listening to our hearts and looking for ways to serve. Mm. Oh, here we go. We're so powerful. Yes. Here we go. The book goes from this way to this way. And look how Audrey put the poppies in the background. Oh, yes. Miss Pittman told us that he chose a life of service when he became a sailor in the Navy long before he worked at our school. That makes him a veteran. That's beautiful. Thank you. Mr. Quigley sacrificed a lot during the war to keep us safe and free, a whole lot. Ms. Pittman said that it was his war injury that left him deaf. For him, deaf meant that he couldn't hear a single thing, not even those keys that sang his song with every step. Not being able to hear must have been very difficult for Mr. Quigley, but it sure didn't seem to hold him back. It may have been how he got so good at reading our emotions and understanding what we were going through. Not to fix it for us, just to feel it with us. Miss Pittman said it's called empathy when we step into someone else's story and get curious about how they're feeling and what they might like want or need. His empathy for us was probably why Mr. Quigley worked so hard to make it such a big deal to be the birthday kid. Mm. He imagined our excitement at getting a hand-drawn picture of our future selfies, so he made a birthday card for each one of us. When Dante heard those keys coming on his big day, he was sure that he'd look like an astronaut in his Quigley creation. <gasps> and he did. And I love to stop here, Melody, and say, Yes. If he's deaf, how does Mr. Quigley know that Dante wants to be an astronaut when he grows up? That's a great question. Thank you. And, and you have one of those questions at the end where you talk about how he communicates with his heart or he yes what does yes. listening with your heart mean because listening, listening with your heart yes means, right yeah yes so powerful all right at recess that afternoon dante announced that he wanted to do something meaningful to thank mr quigley for his creativity and kindness he wasn't sure what so he asked me if i knew of anything mr quigley might like Jen, the quietest friend in the class, quickly ever overheard us and headed over to where we were playing. Um, his birthday is next week. We could call him to our room because something needs fixing and then surprise him by singing the birthday song to him, Jen suggested softly. Oh, and I did throw my dad in the book. See, April 22nd is my father's birthday, and he's a veteran as well. Oh, that is so cool. Dante wondered how Jen knew when Mr. Quigley's birthday was. Then he let us know that he did not think it was a very good idea at all. That won't be much of a treat if he won't even be able to hear us, a skeptical Dante insisted. Jen didn't give up. We could sign, but Dante didn't quite get it. Do you mean make him a birthday sign? Well, we could do that too, Jen responded patiently, but I mean we could learn some American sign language words and use our hands to sign the song. Dante looked at me and shrugged. That sounds hard, doesn't it, Harmony? But before I could answer him, I heard Jen say, I could teach you. Well, we had no idea when or why Jen had learned how to sign, but we both agreed that it would make Mr. Quigley very happy. And so we got back inside and begged Miss Pittman to let Jen teach us. Miss Pittman, who told us more than once that her, how Mr. Quigley reminded her of her own dad, was eager to learn too. So our lessons with Jen started right away. Dante was right 
learning the signs was challenging and it went very super slowly at first. But we were can doers just like Mr. Quigley. So we kept on practicing all week long. Mm. And here we can have them doing those signs to see. Yes, them. I love that illustration. It's beautiful. The more comfortable we became, the more confident we felt connecting through his language. Not to fix it for him, just to feel it with him. And when I noticed that Miss Pittman had tears of joy in her eyes, I knew that we were ready. And that brings us back to the beginning of the book. He's almost here. I called out cheerfully as soon as I heard the clanging cadence of Mr. Quigley's keys. As our hero handyman entered the room wondering what could possibly need repair, his eyes fixed instead on our smiles and our hands as we signed our surprise. And here's that beautiful, diverse class of can doers, huh? I love it. Yes. It is, um, the illustrations are beautiful. Thank you. She did those all on the Procreate app. Oh, that's cool. And when he knelt down to thank us face to face and heart to heart, we didn't need to hear a single word. We could all feel the quiet echo of his gratitude and love. Mm. Well, especially his sweet granddaughter, Jen, who would forever help others hear his keys in their hearts. Mm. And if you look really closely, one of the keys is hidden in her pocket. So she's got uh, one of the camouflage keys in her pocket and the kids get very excited. They refer to it as a mini game and they get very excited to find the camouflaged keys <gasps> throughout the book. I love that. So that's what we're going to have to go back and do as well. This is great. And of course, we want to put this is in loving memory of a real hero, Don Pittman. Don who's Pittman. also in the I'm sorry, I don't hold it up very well. Yeah, he was in the um, Korean War at the age of 19. And wow. then sadly, he passed away from a heart attack when he was, I believe, almost 53. Almost, yeah, young. We, we lost him way too soon. In the back, a little bit about him. Um, a note from his um, daughter and niece. And then the sign language alphabet. My daughter helped me with that. It's the diversity in the hands. Also, the numbers in case they want to do their phone number or learn their address. Some comprehension curiosities and key character questions. Some writing prompts and then some vocabulary. Yes. I'm you English major and I, I need these kids learning those words. So some vocabulary. The last page, Audrey drew our portraits. And so the oh. author and illustrator page shows her side by side with me in her hand rendered pictures. So I thought Audrey Williams just did a smashing job. So good. Yeah, she's a young art teacher in my town. So I'm really excited. I love it. Thank you for sharing this. And I and I apologize if I didn't hold up the illustrations very well. But this was a great story. And I'm and on the back. You can see the can doers. Yeah. Um, true. Truly, this is a great story to even build your theme, your classroom theme. Like if you needed one for the beginning of the new year, or if you come back from a break. Um, there's just you know my teacher brain is always um, in, in, in work. And I love that so much. Um, and I can understand why it is a mom choice awards, uh, winner. It's just, it's just, it's beautiful. Um, so tell us a little bit more about these keys of connection. Okay. Well, when I heard that she said he actually had the keys right on his belt, I started thinking, wow, custodians are such key players in our building, right? Yes. In every building, like wherever, wherever they go, whether it's a school or an office, they just keep us up and running. And so 
Then she also talked about how he was just so kind and the kids got excited. So I thought he's like, that would have a trait on them. The keys, what are the things that connect us? Peace, joy, love, empathy, uh, work ethic, perseverance. So there are 11 of them. And then the one, as I said earlier, that kids, will, I'll ask them. And they'll say things like honor. That could have been say honor. That could have said integrity. That could have said kindness. And they have a good time deciding. And then I'm like, I don't, I don't know what it is either because I can't see it. But whatever you think it is, it's probably right. Some, a, a few kids have said can do or maybe, or even like, Quigley. So then the name Quigley becomes synonymous with someone who just quietly meanders through the school, making connections, like being that connection catalyst, because it's all about relationships, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, truly. I yeah. love that so much. This is such a powerful read. Um, People of all ages can really um, get just insightful information from this. And I, I promise you, when I first read it at the beginning of the school year with my uh, first, wait, third grader, they grow up so fast, I can't keep track. But like, I, I got teary and I had goosebumps just all up my arms. It was just so powerful for us. And so I, I was so excited for you to join my book chat tonight on such a special day. Thank you so much. And thank you for those who have tuned in. I hope that you will, um, you know, find Barbara. She is all over the internet. Um, you can, let, let me see if I have these. I can, you can find her on your blog is. Corner on character. Yes. Corner on character. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm like, <laughs> did I put that? Okay. I'm going to put that up again. You can, and she has so much on her blog and we were just talking before this, you've been teaching for like, or you've been in education at different capacities um, for 34 years. So you've got a lot of kid tested, a lot of resources that are like genuine from so many years of research that any teacher can use. Um, so I just, I, I just encourage you to look up this and I can't wait to write about this and get the word out even more. And just such a perfect book for this season, but even beyond this season, just on a daily basis, it reminds you of what's really important. Right. Thank you so much. I actually have a template too, in case you want your staff to do, I am key to the school because, or if you want to write affirmations to each other, you are key to our school's success because, and just to affirm, to appreciate, we know that gratitude has so many benefits, especially now as we enter the season of Thanksgiving and on into the holidays. So I think there's a lot of different ways that you can use the keys to connection to help kids to understand what's key in their lives and, and whose lives are they key in so that they kind of get the idea that, you know, keys unlock doors while their behaviors will unlock a lot of different doors for them if they can keep those connecting things in front of them. Yes. Oh, I love that. I love that. Well, we have come to the end of our book chat. And I want to say again, just thank you so much to all who have served or are serving in our military. Thank you to the families that are connected. You are true heroes to all of us. We appreciate your sacrifice and the way that you serve in a way that, like I've said, that most of us can't comprehend. And I also want to just say that this is my final book chat for this year. Mm -hmm. I will see you again in January with just incredible books already ready to just be out there. But I hope that everybody has a wonderful holiday season, um, a good, great Thanksgiving. And if you celebrate Christmas or whatever, but in a wonderful new year, Barbara, do you have any last words you'd like to share before we say goodbye? Well, I would like to just say, first of all, how much I appreciate you and your role in helping us get good resources into the hands of the teachers who hold the hearts of our most precious resource the children. Mm -hmm. I also want to say a shout out to my um, sister's husband, Rick Bergman, who was a veteran, who is a veteran, was a Navy sailor. My dad served, our good friend, Dr. David Hearn served. So many people and they go unnoticed because they serve and then they quietly, you know, come back home like the soldier I met last night. But we must never forget and we honor them we thank them and i just want to encourage you anytime you see someone in uniform even if it's just their hat the, the hat that they're wearing because they served step out of your comfort zone and tell them thank you thank you for your service 
teach your kids to do that because we can never thank them enough. And, and my new friend whose name I didn't even get, but he was so appreciative that I would start the conversation with thank you for your service. I love that. I love that. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Barbara. It was such an honor and a pleasure to have you um, here tonight reading your beautiful story. Thank and um, we will see you again in the new year, everybody. Take care. Happy holidays. Yes. I know. Can you believe that the holidays are even here? <laughs> <laughs>